Well, today on Nation Window Cleaning Podcast, we're talking all about burning your company to the ground. How not to do it. How not to just ruin it all. So if you have a company, which I think you do, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it or at least can tolerate it. Uh, I have more of a face for radio, so you can find this on any podcast platform, SoundCloud, Google Play, uh, iTunes, all of those fun places. But if you really are feeling froggy and you want to watch the video itself, it's on YouTube. So watch all over. YouTube's where the conversation is, so make sure to comment. Give it the thumbs up. And uh, yeah, YouTube, man. Share the video. I say that. No one ever does, but you could share the video. Leave a comment uh, on the podcast platform. All the things that you've heard all of the other people say, it's all super valuable. Uh, So do it. Or just enjoy the show and watch them all. We've been doing this now for three and a half plus years. 180 plus episodes, all 30 minutes long. Come out every single Friday, so go back, watch everything you possibly can. Binge away, my friends. But if you are one of the cool kids, one of the certified Cool kids. If you are completely certified, I want to say thank you. That is somebody who watches every single week or listens. They make sure to thumbs up the video on YouTube. You've commented, uh, but more importantly, you buy your supplies through me. Shameless, shameless plug. Uh, Then what's up? It is because of you that I exist here in my recording studio and my mountaintop Los Angeles. No, not really. Uh, It's not quite that fancy. Uh, it's just an office with a piece of paneling on the back. But anyway, it is because of you I get to exist, so I really do appreciate it. And uh, I know I do this every single week, and it does kind of get lost. But ordering through me is literally how I make my cheddar. We don't have a Patreon. We don't do any of that stuff. So if you ever feel like, dude, the content's awesome, uh, maybe your content sucks, but uh, I want you to get a new haircut, let me put your order in. My number is 862 312 2026. That's a cell phone. So call me or text me. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Uh, Or call me, text me and be like, yo, I would like to order this, this, and this. It's just that easy. It does not cost you a dime more. It costs you nothing more. And then you got a guy. You got a rep in the industry. That's me. Uh, We're prepping for spring. Right now it's winter. So um, obviously things are a little on the... um, uh, not as busy side. So if you're trying to reach me, uh, more than likely you can get through. So that's super, super awesome. So definitely do. 862-312-2026. The longest shameless plug that we've done yet. I'm sorry. But on a side note, I want to say what's up to Brian Stone. What's up, man? He's one of the OGs. Chris Chambers, another OG, of course. Matt Clabeau, what's up, man? And Michael Cruz. Um, just want to say what's up to you guys. Try to give some shout outs. I know I always forget. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll try to give you a shout out. If you want a shout out and you put an order in, just be like, yo, send me my sticker and uh, give me a shout out. And, uh, there you go. I'll try. Uh, even if you don't do it, I'd pick some random people just to say, Hey, what's up? So thanks to all you guys. Uh, but today we are talking about burning your company to the ground. Now, I've done a video like this before, um, kind of similar, and I've done it on my mistakes. Um, I have learned more from mistakes than I have achievements, right? It's great. You go online and you see nothing but people like, oh man, look at this monstrous house. Oh man, look at these, you know, surgical towels I use to wash windows because it's the right way. Uh, Or whatever you see online. Um, it's always the positives. It's never the negatives. And if it is the negatives, it's kind of like this little, like, ah, oh, broke a pole today. Oh, grr. But no one ever is like, okay, I destroyed my business because I did this. Or this is the negative thing. I cried for two days. It's just so hard right now. Everything is on my shoulder. I, you don't hear any of that. And I get it, right? We all know that Bobby Walker... Uh, and I were talking, and uh, we were saying it's a highlight reel. And that's what YouTube is, or uh, Facebook. That's what social media is. It's a highlight reel. 
People always put the highlights of their day, their job, their everything. Same thing with forums and Facebook groups. People are always like, I made $250 an hour. That's what I make. No, that's not what you make. That's what you made once because you overbid a job and got it. But it's not what you make, right? So if you're new, understand this. If you're new, everything you read, take it with a grain of salt. Because there's so much out there, you look at all these other companies, you go, man, everybody else is doing better than me. I can't believe it, man. I've been in business for six months and I made like $30,000, $20,000, $15,000. I made, you know, $10,000 in six months. All of that goes, when you look at everybody else, you go, man, these guys, like their first year, the guy made like $300,000. There's a lot of factors that go into that, right? And what was profit? What was gross? What was net? What was gross? So keep it with a grain of salt. But I'm going to tell you a few things that you can do to destroy your business. So with that being said, don't do these things. But you have to kind of like self-check yourself. I do that twice a year at least uh, in pre-spring and pre-fall. I go through everything. Like look at everything. Like where am I messing up? Where am I really, really pooing the bed? And I'm telling you, Every single time I do it, every six months, something, usually multiples, I look at it and go, what the heck? I could be doing that way better. What is going on? Just adjusting. I think my chair is sinking. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit, camera-wise. But you look at it and you go, man, I don't know what I'm doing. Now, these are big, big issues, but you have to look in the mirror. You have to see what you're doing wrong because guess what? No one on social media is going to tell you. None of your friends are going to tell you, your family, eh, if your wife's like mine, she might tell you, she might remind you, but none of you, nobody, your customers aren't going to tell you unless it's a big issue. When it's too late, they tell you. So it's up to you to kind of look at what you're doing, what could you do better, what are you failing at, right? And here's a couple ways to really instantly burn your business to the ground, and I've seen this happen at least uh, 10 times with different companies over the years. Now, I've been in the game for a long time, but I've seen this happen so many times And it's still sad. It's still, still sad when somebody just destroys their company, even when it's an accident. You know, it's one of those things that we try very hard to get the information out there and hopefully help, but sometimes things just don't happen. Uh, One really, really good way that you can just burn your company to the ground is growing too fast. Now, when you're new, if you're a little company or you're a big company, you'll know what this is, but a little company goes, well, I got to grow fast. I got to make more money. I got to, yes. Now, there is a way to grow comfortably. There's a way that you can go ahead and continue to put um, effort into it, amazing effort. Now, the hustle side of it, you have to be, you, that fire has to be burning super, super hot. But the growth side is, is you've been in business for two months, it's just you, not all your equipment is even professional yet, right? You're figuring things out. All of a sudden, this complex comes by. They're like, hey, we got 16 buildings, four stories a piece. We need all this done, and uh, we need it done in the next two months. And you go, oh, my gosh, this is my big chance. This is like a million-dollar contract. Not really a million-dollar contract, but, you know, that'd be a lot of windows. The problem is, is when you don't understand your limitations, you grow too fast. Now, if you said, hey... I'm picking up 20 new houses a month. That's growing fast, but not too fast. You're handling that. When you pick up a job that is just too big for where you are, A, you're not going to do the job. You're going to stress yourself. You're not prepared. You make your company look bad. You lose the contract. You don't finish the contract. You waste a lot of time and money and resources trying to accomplish something you can't do. I know there's a lot of you out there who are car guys. You probably got a sick car. It's awesome, right? But you're not racing in the NHRA. You're not racing in um, NASCAR. Why? Because that's your limitation. Well, I can't do that. But you may go to your local track. You know, you may speed around country roads as part of your enjoyment. You understand that there's certain things you can't do. In business, we're blinded by the money. That dollar sign has got the most bright glow that you ever see in your life and that's that dollar sign so sometimes you can grow too fast growing unhealthily growing too fast right 
All of a sudden, say you're picking up so much stuff that all of a sudden in one year you do two hiring batches. Everybody you got on staff, every single person is brand new. Jobs are getting thrown away. You're losing those clients. They'll never come back to you. People are starting to talk. You got bad reviews. You're like, oh, I can't I can't help it. There's just the, the staff is all new. They're not learning fast enough. No. You grew too fast. You sold too many businesses you couldn't do. You sold too much work too fast you couldn't keep up with it. So make sure you're not growing too fast. This is a really, really, really hard one. Really hard one. And I bounced on that. I bounced on that. I know there was two projects I can think of in my head that I knew were too big. And one other one that was too big that I took on. Ended up doing it. But it was like weeks of crap and I never wanted to do it again even though they became a client. And one of those jobs that I did was one of those. There was like 16 buildings. We went through the walkthrough. We were escorted. It took like five and a half hours to do all the buildings, do all the walkthroughs. I mean, they got a stinking airplane in their one of their buildings. Just like an airplane up in the rafters, right? They have Chihuly sculptures, um, all this stuff. And there's me. We're walking around like this is just not too much. And I know it was too much. But once I got on site, I knew that. I didn't do the bid. I talked to the other guys. I built some really great relationships with the other contractors, of course. But I just said right out, like, hey, guys, I know they're going to need three bids, man, but I cannot bid this. It's just outside of our scope. And it takes a little bit. It's a little kick in the gut, right? Because you're the awesome company that can do anything. But not growing too fast, you don't burn your business to the ground, right? Another really, really good way to just destroy everything you possibly could work for is having garbage equipment. Now, I'm a salesman for windowcleaner.com. You guys know that, right? There is no hidden agenda here. I apologize that there is a, uh, a mix. People go, well, yeah, he's a sales guy, of course. That's not really what I'm doing. When, equipment com- when it comes to equipment, I'm talking about the equipment you use and the equipment you drive, the equipment you wear, all of that. If you have garbage equipment, you're always stepping over your shoes. You're just always, always chasing what happens. I know a company who just finally got a new pressure washer two months ago. Uh, Actually, three months ago. It doesn't matter. But um, they had this junker, junker old like rummage sale pressure washer they bought from a painter. And the thing looks just like it's somebody threw it away. But then somebody got it out of the garbage and fixed. And it was always breaking. Hey, Water's leaking from here. What do I do? Hey, this is happening. I got another guy with a pure water system. The thing, you look at it and it looks like, whoa, whoa. Things like eight years old. Well, yeah, but if I just change these fittings, you know, if I just get new membranes, I think it'll last me and then I'll just have to replace these fittings. Uh, And then, of course, the housing itself is finally cracked. I'll have to replace the housing. But if I replace the housing, then I have to go and I have to... Um, I have to, uh, replace the, uh, screws, bolts, hanger at that single point. How much work are you losing by having garbage equipment? Truck breaks down. You show up and it looks just like a dumpster. How much work are you losing from that? If you pull up in your vehicle, your whip looks like crap. No one's going to look at it. No matter what kind of fancy door magnet you have, right? No one's wrapping a junker. No one's going to look at it and go, look at that company. They're going to look at it and go, wow, I bet those guys are cheap. Right? You're losing new customers. You're not gaining other ones. I know a contractor, myself, that uh, was kicked off a job because his truck leaked oil on a driveway. Like, if you're doing that, the big problem is they will never hire you again. Everybody they come in contact with will not hire you again. They will go above and beyond to tell people like this guy showed up and just trashed our driveway, right? It, it makes so much sense to get the equipment you need. Now, let me tell you this one thing. Easier said than done. It's your dollar. I'm just some dude. I don't know what I'm talking about, but here's just an idea. I have another uh, buddy who is going through a complete rehaul, everything, all new equipment on the window cleaning, pressure washing, new vans, all new apparel, everything. They're just... Hey, starting this year, boom, everything is awesome, brand spanking new. And we were talking about it. Like, Dude, this is going to cost like an $80,000 like just like boost. Like, I just, it just doesn't know. I don't know if it's worth it. Well, here's the thing. 
Will having a nicer truck with better brand new logos get you new work? Absolutely. freaking lutely Will equipment that will always work because it's brand new not lose you time? Absolutely. Will all of your new shirts, you guys look crisp and clean and you're looking good. Now every job you do, you're starting to have people stop. Oh, do you have a card? Oh, do you have a card? Is that selling you work? Buying equipment is not like buying a TV. We do financing, by the way, um, and uh, we finance a ton. It is not the cheapest option you could possibly go with. Pay cash. That's the cheapest option. But our finance is great because it allows people to get the equipment they need and make payments. They're making money on the equipment while they're paying it back. A TV will never make you money. A new PlayStation 5, that's a waste of money. Uh, if you're into it, maybe it's not, that's your luxury, but I'm saying it's never going to bring you in money. If you go and spend $80,000 on new shirts and you know vehicles and all new gear, that will make you money. It will make you a ton of money and it will grow your business. Just think of that. Not just because I'm a sales guy. By the way, 862312. No, I'm just kidding. No, but really, uh, if you guys, uh, you know, don't do it and say, Jersey told me. No, just think about it, though. If you got stuff, you're not losing time on garbage equipment. You look more professional. You act more professional. People stop and talk to you. People are noticing you. They're taking pictures of your things. You look more presentable. You've just boosted your company up. New equipment is amazing. Another way to just burn your company to the ground is not branding. I know a lot of you guys out there are like, oh, you know, I just, I I try to wear nice clothes. You know, I'm clean. I show up. Yes. But you're not creating a brand. If you don't have a brand, right, you don't have your logo shirt, everybody you have working with you or just yourself, everything is the same color. Logos on everything. Everything is new, crisp. Your vehicles are all wrapped. If you don't look like that, you're a guy. I, I, I hire Joe. He comes and does it. Oh, what company's right? I don't know. Uh, it's just Joe. I can give you his number. I think I got his number. I don't know. He, he's pretty good. You know, he shows up. When all of a sudden you become a company, and we've talked about it the other way. Don't be a company, be a person. That is in the interaction, not in the presentation. The presentation of you being an actual legitimate company allows people to look at that and go, oh, I'm not focused on your price. I just want that service. Oh, look at this. I did a I did a quote. This at the time it might actually still be. It was a ninety eight thousand uh, dollar yearly contract. Yearly contract, ninety eight thousand dollars that we held for. We held for gosh six years, probably longer than that. We held this contract. I showed up. Now, you've heard one of the stories that I bought a new truck for that. It was they made a demo for Thursday and I had to show up and I literally put everything together on Sunday. I ordered the truck and had that by Wednesday. Missed my demo day on Thursday. Rescheduled the Friday and landed. It was a big gamble that paid off. Now, I landed a 98,000. It was like 98,600 and something. Over $98,000 job for the year. When I got there, I did the whole demo. The guy that was watching my demo, uh, he's sitting there smoking, talking to this other guy, watching whatever. I do the whole thing. I go, hey, so what'd you think? And he goes, huh? Um, Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. I said, oh, is there anything else I could do differently? He goes, no, I saw you pull up. I knew you were going to get this. He saw me pull up on my equipment and the contract was mine. I didn't even have to do the demo. Now, this is pressure wash. We don't do demos in window cleaning, but listen, if you show up to a job in the cleanest, most professional, look at your equipment, sparkles, everything is new, it's amazing, you know what you're doing, you will sell more work that way. If people go in and they know, they're like, whoa, look at this company, yeah, I want them. How much do they charge? I don't I don't know. I think it was good, the price was good. They don't know, they don't focus on the price. Same reason that Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, all the big car companies don't have sales because it's not a price thing. You want a Ferrari, you buy a Ferrari. If you want a Ferrari, you don't go out there and buy a Honda. You don't go out there and look at anything else. You walk into a Ferrari dealer. To get in the doors, they have to see that you're certified that you have the money to go. It's already. You come in, we need to know. You show up, they sit you down, give you a glass of champagne or or fancy coffee and maybe some snacks and 
classical music playing, and you're sitting in chairs in the lobby that are full leather. You go into an experience. You go, whoa. Like, this is the Ferrari experience. This is what I'm paying for. Do you want one of these? What's the price? No, no. Do you want one? Do you want a Ferrari or not? Because it doesn't matter the price. Price is just going to continue, you know, decide what model you're going to get, really. You're still going to get a Ferrari. Now, I know everybody goes, well, yeah, but our job is just to clean bird poop off windows. You know, I don't have to look good. It will sell you more jobs. It will secure more people. It will make people go, whoa, anybody else. If I look crisp, amazing, all my gear's new, somebody else comes in and goes, I'd like to give you a quote. They look over there and they go, uh, no, we're good. Because they know. Like, look at that guy compared to the guy I got. I got the guy. I got the guy. Right? Or gal. Sorry. PC in 2021. But I want to be their guy. I want to be that right so make sure you're not 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 branding make sure you're branding there you go too many double negatives there another thing that will burn your company to the ground is being horrible now if you're a horrible person you're probably not in business already there's a lot of people out there that i see that just troll everything they troll everything and i know this isn't like i can turn it on and turn it off i talk to customers when they talk to customers they just kind of hide it a little bit but if you're still that person, people are going to be turned off by you. The big thing, you know, the whole uh, customer is always right kind of concept. I know that that sometimes hits people the wrong way because they're like, yeah, but my customers are wrong sometimes. Sometimes I need to tell them that. I know, I know, I know. There's a way to do that, though. Not being horrible and being above and beyond polite and giving them the time. Everybody wants your time. Nobody wants you to show up and uh, you say, oh, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> how many windows you got? With, uh, and they start talking to you and you're like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. No, no, yeah, uh, 199 Like, well, yeah, but I didn't have to listen to him because I already knew the price. No, 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 no. When people talk, they have so much more to tell you than they actually say, right? So you have to figure it out and listen, but you have to be intensive and you have to give them your time. If you're a horrible person, you're killing yourself. You're going to burn your business to the ground. You're not going to be as successful as you could be. Understand your presence, your outgoing presence is what people receive, and that's what they know. Another one to instantly kill your business. Uh, Let me rephrase that. Not instantly. Over time, is not knowing sales. People go, well, I don't need to know sales. I'm a window cleaner. Yes, but you're selling yourself. You're selling your service. Why do Facebook ads work? What ads work best? Door hangers, brochures, postcards, your website, SEO. Ad spend. What are you doing? What works? Why do you have red logo over blue? I uh, like red. You're not doing yourself a service. You're going to kill your business because you don't know sales. Read a book. Literally. That's the stupidest thing that I've ever said as far as like the most douchey kind of thing. But read a book. I got to my left. I got, I don't know, a shelf and a half of just sales books. I listen to audiobooks. You have to understand people to understand. We talked about mirroring. That's awesome. We talked about different things and tactics, but you need to know it. Otherwise, you're just going to keep bringing your business down and down and down. Sales is the only thing. You sell or die. Because guess what? Your clients are going to die. They're going to move. They're going to no longer have you. They're going to lose their job. They're going to drop you. They're not going to forget to call you. They're going to hire somebody else. You're going to lose clients. That is a guaranteed 100%. If you're not selling new ones, Eventually, you're not going to have anybody left. You have to sell new ones. Even if you are at a point where you're like, you know what? I like where I'm at. I'm comfortable. I don't want to grow. Cool. Do you have any customers that suck? Do you have any customers that are too low, are a pain in the butt, are too far? Yeah, you do. That's the time now you need to go and change, sell, get those new accounts, make a stronger company. Remember, a stronger company doesn't mean a bigger company. It means a better company. Another way to just kill your business and burn it to the ground is never improving. Like active improving. There's there's just something out there where people are just so set in their ways and I don't get it. I'm going to give you an example. There's a guy in the forums. He is a customer. He is extremely brash. Um, People uh, are not receptive to how he talks to other people. 
They're just not. But he posts things because he knows. He knows it. Now, I've talked to him. He's a great guy. But the way that it's all put out there is the problem. It's because this is the way to do it. You guys are fools if you don't do it this way. We knew that with old uh, Benji Hanks, if you remember him. Which, gosh, I'm so happy that guy is gone. He was a thorn in my side from the forum groups. I know I'm a nice guy, but he just, he was that guy. He was a troll. He was like, hey, you guys are stupid for soft washing. Look what I do. And he's got a pressure washing, uh, like a pole with like a nozzle, like a garden hose thing. And he duct taped. It was the most ridiculous thing. But he thought he knew better. He'd go, hey, man. Uh, I like your innovation stuff, but let me tell you, this is the way that is like the most efficient way to do a soft wash using X jet. Again, not starting that debate, but here, here's a way to do it. This is an awesome way. It's super fast. It does great results. Uh, it's blah, blah, blah. No, dude, I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, okay, cool. Like we're not playing, you know, uh, we're not measuring here. Right. But I'm telling you, this is a better way. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, well, you're obviously not going to improve. You are stuck where you are. You're not improving. You're never going to improve. Dinosaurs die. Remember that. Dinosaurs die. You remember Blockbuster? And everybody went to Blockbuster on the weekends, man. There was like six Blockbusters in my one town. Blockbuster, Blockbuster. They're gone. Remember Kodak? Well, Kodak's still around there in imaging and like uh, MRIs and things like that. But they don't make film. They're not really a film company. Maybe they make film for movie studios, but guess what? They're just not doing what they should be doing. Right? There's a lot of those companies who just didn't change. They're like, I'm the king. I know what I'm doing. And the world went, mm, no. You have to always be improving. You are improving. You're here listening. You are listening to a podcast done by some moron with a microphone <laughs> to help your business be better. You're improving just by being here. Keep that mindset, right? Another and final way to just burn your business to the ground. And this one I'm so hot on. It's hustle. Now, there's so much stuff out there that people go, oh, everybody's a hustle, 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 money, money, money. I'm working on a Sunday. I'm not talking about working a billion hours. Unfortunately, I am that person, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fire that is inside of you. It's the fire that doesn't let you sit in the middle of the afternoon. It's raining out. You're not just going to sit there and watch Murray or Maury or whatever his name is. Sally, Jesse, Raphael. You're not going to... There aren't even shows. See, I don't watch TV. But anyway, so, you know, having hustle means getting there, always improving, getting out there, selling your services always. If you are ABS, always be selling, then you are going to succeed. There's so many things that are other than selling, but you have to have that hustle. If you don't have that hustle, no one can change that. No one's going to come to you and go, hey, Douglas. Sorry to tell the Doug's there. But uh, Douglas, uh, I just don't think that you're, you're working hard enough. No one's going to say that to you because no one cares. If Doug doesn't want to work any harder than he is working right now, he's not going to and no one cares. If you fail, Doug, you'll find another job. Think about this. Everybody that when you said, oh, I'm starting a window cleaning company, after they were done laughing, what did they say? They said, well, what's your, what's your plan B? Oh, nice. Well, if that doesn't work out, what are you going to do? No one says, no one's like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> doctor? There's no money in that. What's your, what are you going to do if that doesn't work out? No one says that. But they do to us. Everybody's just ready, like, oh, yeah, he's going to try it. You know, whatever. He's young. He can he can try it. If it doesn't work out, you know, he's a smart guy. He'll land on his feet. No one cares if you have hustle or not. The only person who cares if you have hustle or not is you and your competition. Because if you don't have hustle, and they do, they're going to stomp you into the ground. And they're going to bury your company after they burn it to the ground. There you go. I'm hopping off my soapbox for the day. But thank you, guys. Really. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, make sure to uh, save my number. I haven't checked it out. If you haven't saved my number, do so. Uh, this is my shameless plug, but I want all of you, every one of you who's listening, the like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of downloads we get on this, 
I want all of you to be my customer for window cleaning supplies. Uh, yeah, but I only put in little orders. That's cool. Yeah, but listen, I don't even care if you don't hit the free shipping threshold, $49. I want to put the company, I want to put the order in. That's how I make my cheddar. All the accounts, all the orders, they all match. I want to have customers, big or small, especially the guys who are loyal. I love that. I love when somebody texts me like, yeah, I got another order in. There's so many of you. I literally, I'm going to try this week to just all of the guys, as many as I could possibly remember, that just send me something like, yo, Jersey, put it in. I'm going to try to say what's up to all of you. I'm going to give you a shout out, like 100 people. I don't know that I'll do that because I'll forget, but I want to be a rep. 862-312-2026. If you're still listening, thank you for listening to that rant. Uh, if you haven't checked it out either, American Window Cleaner Magazine. I'm putting this at the end. I, don't, I told you I wasn't going to talk about it anymore, but the new issue is here, and it's awesome, and it comes with stickers, and it's awesome. So if you haven't gotten your subscription, go do that, awcmag.com forward slash uh, subscribe. Anyway, thanks, guys, for listening. We'll see you next week. Go out there. Don't burn your company to the ground. Make some changes if you need to. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.